This video is going to be a film study look at Anthony Richardson, who I think is a fascinating player for, for many content creators, Colts fans, uh, during this offseason after a shortened rookie season, despite only playing four games, throwing, I think, just three touchdowns, rushing for another four. There's a ton of content out there on Anthony Richardson in this offseason, some of it speculative, uh, some of it making definitive statements about how his 2024 season and thus the Colts also will go. First of all, even health permitting, I don't think anyone can predict how he will perform um, acutely. Even though Richardson offers significant talent, arm strength, making things happen with his athleticism and his speed, I don't know about you, but I was also impressed by his quick decision-making on certain three-step concepts, and I'll show that um, early in this video. The Colts clearly have a high-level offensive coach, and offensive design overall, in the case of Shane Steichen, they did lose a number of one-score games in 2023, some of which Richardson played in, some he did not. They had the 39-38 loss to the Browns, a game I thought they really blew. The overtime defeat to the Rams, a game in which they trailed 20 to nothing at halftime before Richardson led them on a sick comeback, nonetheless falling short in overtime. The Colts, I think, have every reason to be successful in offense. 2024. They have tremendous talent. Besides Richardson, that is. Michael Pittman Jr. returns. He just put up over 100 catches. I think he only had four touchdowns. In this video, I'll show you at least one other play where he could have had a touchdown. Jonathan Taylor returns. He needs another 100,000 yard season, excuse me, after 800 and 700 roughly the last two years. Josh Downs is a slick, tough, slot type wide receiver who was second on the team with 68 catches in 2023 as a rookie. They just drafted Adonis Mitchell in round two, who's an explosive athlete, 18 career touchdowns in the SEC while playing for Georgia and Texas. Richardson, I think, is set up to succeed. And the film that I'm going to show here, I think, illustrates that he can, in fact, produce. Now, are there some concerns? Maybe I need to find a better word besides concerns. Sure. Others have mentioned them on social media. I don't get a chance to watch film study videos by other people. Um, I'm sure they've been mentioned already. I will give you a couple of my own. Overall, I'll be honest with you, based on what I saw from early 2023, I expect the Colts' offense to be incredibly dangerous and for Richardson to be at the center of a lot of it. Steichen's design is going to safeguard things for everyone on that offense, not just Anthony Richardson. Let's get to the film first, and this will be a discussion and examination of his ability to make quick decisions on mostly three-step concepts. In all the discussion that is out there about Richardson, whether it was pre-draft 2023 or, or whether it was after his rookie season, the shortened year of only four games, look, the film is limited, but you hear, heard all of the following. Arm strength, athleticism, maybe some criticisms of his accuracy and his lack of experience. The one thing I noticed, and this is even dating back to the Ravens getting ready to play the Colts in week three of last year, was how quickly they're asking him to get rid of the ball in certain cases, basically turning him into a facilitator. And I had not seen that mentioned much. I would say it's an underrated element to his game, at least from what I've heard about. You don't see too many people taking this running back into the boundary immediately like you see here. Richardson into the boundary, and that's going to be a common theme that you're going to notice across this film that I show you, is Steichen and the Colts attacking the boundary, particularly when Richardson is on the field. I'm not saying that they attack to the boundary more or less versus when Gardner Minshew was playing, but attacking into the boundary with multiple concepts. In this case, you have a quick concept, three to the boundary, two tight ends, one of which is running a vertical, turns into potentially a corner route. Seems like in this offense, they really like that route running back into the flats. I'm not saying that no one else takes this, but this is an indication of a guy who will take what the defense gives him. In this case, it happens to be eight yards, again, into the boundary to the running back. Look, sure, there's a, there's a lot of RPOs being, that were run by the Colts in 2023. I'm not saying they didn't, but there's a lot of snag, flat, mesh concepts, other quick game stuff that Richardson and the Colts relied on into the boundary to take advantage of the defense where Richardson, if he sees it, he takes it. And there's other quarterbacks that are looking for a bigger chunk right off the bat, whether it's first and 10 or whether it's second and four. 
I think, do I think the Colts could have built off of some of these quick game concepts more? In the, I'm exclusively talking about the film with Richardson. Yes, absolutely. But he looks comfortable in, in short three-step concepts. What Mesh is, is I'm kind of stretching the definition of a quick game concept by calling Mesh a, a, a quick game concept. But they surely run a lot of it, to be honest with you. Pittman, you can see underneath, running back is you know to the boundary going up the sideline, basically clearing that space. They run mesh often in this offense. I think you see evidence of Richardson being well-coached, first of all, which seems obvious, but also being coachable from his style of play. He's a tremendous athlete. He can make things happen with his legs. He, there are some athletes, not just at the NFL level, college, high school, youth, who if they don't see their first read, they can take off because they have the athleticism to do that. They've been able to succeed doing that for years. This seems to be a strength is what I'm saying. Him getting rid of the ball quickly on designed concepts that everyone runs or replacing a blitzer. In this case, I think it's Foyer Lewican on the blitz on a second and nine, and Richardson basically replaces it to Downs for 22 yards. Downs seems to be a favored target of his, and I can't blame him. The guy's super talented. Basically, he's not just a scrambler, and he's not someone who looks to scramble. I feel like he looks to get the ball where the coach tells him to, and to me, so far from what I'm seeing, it looks like into the boundary, quick game concept seems to be um, an inordinate amount of the time. This is one of the throws I'll talk about later that I think is a little bit high. Maybe him and the receiver tight end aren't exactly on the same page as where he should be. When you say aren't on the same page, you're talking about a difference of about a foot to two feet, maybe two and a half feet at the NFL level. And for whatever reason, Richardson and a couple of the other other guys on the Colts roster occasionally are slightly off in their connection. I'm talking about McKenzie. I don't have any data to back up my assertion that he's throwing the ball to the boundary a lot. But the film, the plays that I'm showing you is not an over-representation of that, meaning I didn't intentionally craft these plays to show only the ones into the boundary. These were some of the ones I thought were uh, most useful in evaluating Anthony Richardson, and they happened to have a ton of plays into the boundary. Was there times where I thought he could have gotten rid of the ball quickly, absol quicker? Absolutely. Nonetheless, he seems really comfortable with the concepts that Steichen was calling, I do think that there was opportunities for the Colts to do things based off of the initial concept, meaning you're going to get a snag concept here by Pittman and then tight end into the flat. Later, you have, I think this is Pierce on the over concept. I'd like to see that attacked some in order to keep the defense honest so that if you do get a corner basically jumping the snag route here, you can take advantage of that vacated space, which is what the design here is my point is in crediting Richardson for these type of plays is that his coach appears to tell him what to read at times. He's willing to take the single and not always look for a triple or a home run. Here's three examples of the aforementioned mess concepts is particularly effective on third down for them. Again, I'm referencing the film solely for, for Anthony Richardson, not necessarily with Minshew, although I do recall from seeing the Colts offense against the Ravens in week three that he was effective running mesh concepts as well. Mesh, you're usually talking about two underneath drags, crossers, if you will, whereby one of them that originates from the side opposite the running back is the player that is usually open, at least in my opinion. In my experience, you're usually getting running back released to one side and then the drag from the opposite side of the field, the other side of the formation, ends up running onto that open space, and that's the case here. It's a play that I've shown you a couple of times earlier. Mesh, like I said, was particularly effective for them on third downs. This one ha That one happened to be a first and 10. I didn't think Richardson had a ton of downfield throws in 2023 from what I saw. Maybe I'm missing some plays. Don't get me wrong. I know that there wasn't a ton of film out there, but there's definitely reliance on the quick passing game well-coached, and he seems well-schooled in it because he's getting the ball out quick, and like I said a moment ago, seems willing to take a bunch of singles and doubles rather than always swinging for a home run. His arm strength, I think, is a plus here because of, because of his ability to recognize coverages. Maybe the Colts are controlling coverage at times 
whatever the reason is, his arm strength, his quickness of, of getting the ball out on these quick game concepts allows the running back, receiver, tight end, in this case, to be able to run onto the open space, pick up yards after the catch, if you will. Uh, I like what they do in terms of setting up other plays. No matter what the personnel group is, quick game concepts seem to be a foundational element of what they did, at least early in the season in 2023. Could that change the season? Richardson's second year, hopefully a full year? Absolutely. Richardson's athletic ability, athleticism are obviously off the charts. Huge asset for the Colts, if you ask me. He brought over this log draw play from the Eagles with him. Richardson scores here against it against the Texans early in the game. Basically, you create a, a six on five. When the running back gets out of the box, you've removed a player from the box. In this case, it's the inside linebacker Perryman. And you've got five offensive blockers and the quarterback as a runner, six, versus a four one inside the box. Four down linemen, whether it's outside linebackers or DNs, whatever and your one remaining inside linebacker. And in this case, you got a guy like Richardson with the Eagles when Steichen was there, Jalen Hurts, just too athletic in that amount of space for anyone to be able to tackle with a lead blocker in front. Also running routes down at the bottom side of the screen, and that pulls a couple of defenders towards the sideline. Basically, because the Texans are playing man in this particular alignment, pulls them away from the point of attack. And you can see once Anthony, Anthony Richardson gets around the initial block on the inside linebacker, those guys are all the way down towards the sideline in coverage, back turned at least for a moment, such that they cannot get to the quarterback and make a play before there's a touchdown. End zone angle. Look, the Eagles would normally block this with a center. So they would normally pull the center and log him while down blocking with the play side guard. In this case, because there's a one to the field, a one technique D tackle here, they're going to basically down or back block it with the center, and then the right guard's going to pull and wrap. Since the Texans set the three to the boundary, the Colts show the versatility or adaptability, I guess, to be able to block it in either way. Normally, you would see it done with Kelsey or the Eagles being the wrapper and lead blocking. Three technique also kind of runs himself out of the play. Ends up being an 18-yard touchdown. He got a waggle crack play from the same game, by the way, week two. He only played 18 snaps in this game. Scores from 15 yards out. I don't know what you call it or what familiarity uh, you have with the system that they run there. I tend to name things or have names already, I should say, based on wing T plays because I coached against it so much in high school and youth football that I learned as much of the terminology as I could. You basically get a crack here by the X receiver and then – H-back tight end, looping out into the boundary side flats to lead the way, again, away from the nickel defender. And also, you get motion by the Colts right to left for the offense, top to bottom for us, that exploits the man coverage of the Texans, basically subtracts a defender here, crack the front side inside linebacker, edge defender, in this case, Will Anderson, runs himself out of the play. Great play call, great design and execution. Somewhat similar play conceptually here against the Rams. I'll discuss this one at length. It's a dual read play, if you ask me. Big run by Richardson, I think 22, 23 yards. Again, notice the Rams are, are chasing the motion and the play that goes against the flow of that motion, against the green. Right to left for us, motion going across the screen. You can see the defender running with that motion against downs. Edge defender, outside linebacker, DN, whatever you want to call him is the dual read player, meaning Richardson and this tight end are both reading him at the same time. If that edge defender was to, let's say, run upfield to try to secure and make sure that Anthony Richardson doesn't keep it, I suspect that the tight well, first of all, I know that Richardson would give the football, but the tight end would insert inside there to go block the front side inside linebacker. Since this defensive end or outside linebacker steps down, now the H-back tight end is going to loop around still potentially be responsible for the same player, frontside inside linebacker or frontside corner as it stands because they take the X receiver or Z, Alec Pierce, and they go get the safety. It ends up being a 23-yard gain. Counter option against the Jags. Again, we're highlighting his running ability, which should be obvious to anyone who's watching the video this long. Pistol counter here. So the left guard and left tackle are pulling up into the boundary, the top side of the screen. Richardson is reading it.
is if he does give the football, Trayvon Walker theoretically has the athleticism and length and explosiveness to be able to go tackle the dive back. Now, some would say if the DN or Reed man doesn't tackle the dive man, then it should have been a give. But the pistol option and under center option are somewhat different animals in terms of the timing. In this case, Walker can see that the football has been kept and he tries to redirect. Now, Richardson's just too fast and he gets to the edge for a 12 yard gain. I think he averaged 5.4 yards per carry in 2023. Scored four touchdowns. Clearly him and Jonathan Taylor in the backfield together at the same time is a big deal if they are healthy. I do like how the Colts are consistently sealing the first defender to the inside. So as Downs goes in motion, witness this defender go with him. Very similar to the previous two plays I showed you, manipulating with the motion. They're constantly getting the X receiver to pin someone down. In this case, he happens to pin the exact defender who initially went with downs. And then you get corners out in space who are left with a blocker to deal with. Oye Lewican happens to be there from an inside out standpoint. It's a beautiful illustration, if you ask me, of how out of 11 personnel, the Colts are willing and able to create space to run with Richardson out on the edge. QB counter read here against the Rams. Is it, first of all, it's a beautiful play. Richardson is very efficient at reading it. So conceptually, you have the same dynamic as the previous option play. You have an outside run threat and an inside run threat, run threat, but it's inverted here. So first, Richardson's helmet clearly looking at the read man. It's an inversion of the play conceptually, both in terms of player and timing, meaning on the last play, the pistol count, the pistol read, and most option run concepts, that is, the running back is the inside threat. So the running back would be the downhill threat, quarterback keeping it and running out to the edge potentially as a secondary option on the play. This is inverted in terms of the timing and who threatens what part of the field. So here, the quarterback is the interior run threat, the downhill threat, and the running back is the outside run threat. That's why when this first popped up, maybe early 2000s, late 1990s, it was called inverted veer even though you had pulling linemen on it and people aren't pulling on veer option, but I digress. Richardson and any quarterback that are tasked with reading it, this is an opposite read, meaning if the defensive end goes up field on this play, QB counter read or bash, you keep it and you run yourself behind a pulling lineman. If the DN goes up field, however, on the previous play I showed you, pistol option, you give it to the running back. So it's an inverted read. It's not an easy thing to be able to do, and if you talk about it or think about it in terms of NFL quarterbacks, you, as Anthony Richardson, have to do this, execute this on a particular play. The very next play or the previous one, maybe a third down, you've got to execute an NFL passing concept and read the same things that other quarterbacks have to do at that level. I think it's more challenging than, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of us realize, myself included, going from a quote, typical NFL quarterback role on one play to something like this, navigating QB counter read or bash on the very next. His scrambling ability is, is well documented with his athleticism, his burst. He's a dangerous guy. I, I haven't seen a ton of these, to be honest with you, in the film that I have, um, where after one look at a receiver, he takes off. Now, this one happens to be, once again, into the boundary, meaning this is his first look. I do wonder if there's a potential for the slot over as, as a complementary route being next. Generally, he gets from one read to the other pretty quick. This one may have been a call. You never know what a quarterback is told in their helmet in the NFL. May have been a call. Look for a particular guy to the boundary. If it's not there, take off. And I think that in two-minute drills, that is absolutely what some quarterbacks are told. Two-minute drills at the end of a second quarter or the end of a game. And it's a devastating option, man. It's, if you've ever had to defend, tried to defend as a player or a coach, or watched your team try to defend on television, an athletic mobile quarterback in a two-minute drill, it can be horrifying to know that even if we get to third and eight, that guy can just scramble and get the first down. Defense is almost in a no-win situation. And for all the weapons that the Colts will bring into 2024, some of which I named earlier, I think Richardson's scrambling ability 
in moments like this, well, maybe not exactly moments like this, I do think generally he's going through more than one read before he's looking to scramble. Maybe a situation, like I said, where he was told something in his headset pre-snap, but I'll pause this in a moment, and you can see the possibility to hit Pierce in the middle of the middle of the field. Richardson has the arm to get there before this safety or anyone can react to it. But I do wonder about his scrambling ability being almost this trump card in late game or late in the second quarter situations where the defense is looking pass only. Finally, you've got a two-point conversion play in the third quarter against the Rams. I think this one pulled the Colts to within 23-8. to eight. They're looking for something here at the bottom of the screen off of this rub or pick concept, but the Rams switch it. So Downs is motioning inside, and I think what they're trying to do is get this defender to go with him and then utilize the tight end to pick or screen the aforementioned defender. However, the Rams chose to switch it pre-snap, meaning 44 didn't go with Downs. So as Richardson looks over here, he's not open. Downs is not open because they didn't switch it, and the screen, which was supposed to be on the corner, ends up being on the guy who's going the tight end anyway. So make a long story short, Downs is covered. Richardson has possibly a second option here going across the middle of the field, but hey, Aaron Donald is bearing down on him, beats their right guard easy. And so that option's not there. He just breaks the tackle, gets away, and completes a pass to Moss that's pretty ridiculous, if you ask me, from the standpoint of that's Aaron Donald. Lining up, going against the right guard. Doesn't allow Richardson to get to that second read at all. You can see how quickly he's in on him. Maybe it's the contact or surface or aiming point area that defensive players are given now, but either way, Aaron Donald, surefire Hall of Famer, Anthony Richardson just shrugs him right off. I think this illustrates how he can escape pressure, make plays when the pocket breaks down or when the pocket's just destroyed, like in the case of Donald beating the right guard. It's a brilliant play, man. They made a furious comeback in this game. Well, if you're a Colts fan, you're listening this long. First of all, thank you. Second of all, you know that they made a comeback from down 20 to nothing to tie it up 23-23. Unfortunately, he only played 22 snaps the next week against the Titans. The next section of plays we're going to look at is going to be less complimentary than the first two. I always like to try to provide some balance or opposing views in my own videos. There's going to be some missed throws or maybe missed opportunities from Richardson from last year. Now, are these indicative of a larger problem? Meaning, is he going to be inaccurate on these downfield throws or outside the numbers such that the quick game becomes something the DBs can latch onto and take away easily? I don't know. I don't know. I do see enough plays to mention it to you, so that's why I, I chose to – Pick these plays and, and use them to illustrate to you something that's of an opposing nature to my general tone, which is that I think he can be a, a fantastic quarterback as soon as 2024. Third and eight here against the Rams. You get a clean pocket. There is some slight pressure from 97 for the Rams. I think is a really underrated football player. Richardson really won't get a better pocket than this on a third and long that often. Pittman is the number two receiver. He kind of breaks open on a corner route. Rams are basically playing man match on one and two. And then three, which is downs, is allowed to run in the middle of the field. So you got man on one, man on two. What I do like about this, Richardson has a cannon for an arm, first of all. Can he make this throw physically? Absolutely. I like the trust and the recognition here early. He's releasing the ball early. Pittman is still making his break to the outside. And Richardson is already on the throw, already pulling the pin on the grenade and made up his mind. Now, if he can make these throws consistently in 2024, along with the scheme and the organization that Shane Steichen and the Colts will have around him, the talent that's there surrounding him, and the Colts' offense could be off the charts devastating. That could be a real problem for any defense to deal with. But is he going to miss these throws often enough such that teams force him to complete them, and he does not? I don't think so, but I'll offer to you that if you watch the film from 2023, you have to leave that possibility open. He tends to miss high. Out here sometimes, outside the bottom of the numbers, look, he's got a spectacular arm. That's obvious. And sometimes it seems like, now maybe he couldn't follow through completely because of this pressure on the outside, but you won't get a cleaner pocket than that if you ask me. Maybe he held up his re release a little bit because of 97's presence on his outside shoulder, his left shoulder. But this is a throw he can make physically, given the time and the space he has to make it. If he cuts to it this way, if he can't make it, 
we can't complete that, then, and others like it. There's going to be limitations on how far the Colts can go. I think they're a very dangerous team in 2024. It was no fun watching them with Gardner Minshew in week three against the Ravens come into Baltimore and get a win. They're going to be very interesting immediately since they play the Texans, I think, at home in week one at 1 o'clock, so you'll find out fast because the Texans are incredibly talented and deep across the board. This is another half-field pass play to his left into the boundary. This one both has the element of a high throw. It's on the wheel to uh, McKenzie, who is wide open in the dead spot between a corner and safety and a cover two. And it also has Rich Richardson's late for whatever reason here. It's 12 personnel, and the Rams are matching with their base 3-4. Well, I, I say their base 3-4. They're normally in a 5-1, in a but they do have two inside linebackers, so only two corners and then two safeties up high. They've been manipulated. The motion pulls nobody, so pre-snap, you have to think that Richardson knows something. He has some definit definitive info on what the coverage might be. McKenzie is open now, and I'm not sure why. Maybe McKenzie's supposed to sit. Maybe he's supposed to run up the field. I don't think that Steichen's designing a play to have him run into a safety. So if him and Richardson are both reading too high, he's sitting down correctly, if you ask me. I think Steichen called the exact play to beat this coverage, got the exact look from a cover two shell. Everyone for the Rams drifted. They drifted because that's where the routes go. When I say they, this doesn't look like a, quote, too high safety structure, but if that's the flat corner and then that's your other cover two safety, it's because everyone is kicked to the boundary for the Colts in terms of all three route options that are there for Richardson to access. You guys have to let me know if others have talked about this issue, him being high on some of his throws outside to the sidelines. You clearly have to put a lot of velocity on the football to get it there in the NFL. I think the first throw needed more touch. This one, you want to get it there before the safety can react. You can see how close the safety was to getting there before McKenzie could get his hands on the football. But I think this is two feet too high, maybe three. And that's going to be the difference when you're trying to win a division as tough as the one the Colts are in with the Texans, the Jags, and the Titans. I think it's a murderer's row, very similar to the AFC North. End zone angle, same play, how clean the pocket is all the time in the world. And he's looking to that side of the field, of course, because that's the only place where all th any of the three receivers are. The throw being high, could it be caught in the NFL level? Of course. Still think it's two feet high and needs to be put in a better place being as how wide open McKenzie was off the jump. Sometimes there is also a real balance between smoking the ball to your receiver and putting some touch on it, and we tend to criticize, but there's times where you have to put the ball as much on it as you can in order to get it there before the defender. This is a second and eight against the Jags. The Z, defend, or Z receiver is going to be on an in cut and the tight end on this little corner into the boundary that they seem to love. Again, saw this one at least 10 or 12 times in my film study. Smash in, whatever you want to call it. I think it's a high throw, first of all. Okay, fine. Rayshon Jenkins also makes a, a good, does a good job here, if you ask me, is the boundary side safety. Look at his depth compared to the field side safety where you have twins. As soon as Richardson starts to pull the pin on the grenade, he's already stopped his back pedal because he's eyeing Richardson and the route, and then he's breaking on it now. Now, Let's do it this way. If there was a little bit less velocity on this, let's say 5% less or 7% less, well, then Rayshon Jenkins may be able to undercut it, get a clean pass defense, or maybe even diving attempt at an interception. You need the right speed as a quarterback, and you need the right velocity and accuracy. Those three elements, it seems like to me, sometimes Richardson has a handle on two of them, but not the third. And it can alternate between plays. He has handle on the speed, handle on the accuracy, but not the touch or handle on the, the velocity and handle on the timing, but not the accuracy. Do I expect, can, well, can he make this throw? Yes. Do I expect him to make this throw in 2024? Yes. Do I think the Colts have, have worked on some of these quote overthrows already? Of course. But in the limited film that I have from 2023, I would say it's a priority that they should have addressed in film study, film room already, and then out on the field in OTAs and then training camp upcoming. This is a fourth down. 
where the throw isn't just high, but maybe it's not in the best location possible, particularly on a fourth down. Now, look, there's an absolute win here by Aaron Donald that's getting into his grill on the release. Fine. This is a fourth and seven, fourth and six. If it's third down here and you put this throw in a position, can the tight end make the catch here? Absolutely. You, you want the tight end to make the catch. There's 3.30 left in the third quarter. You're down 23-8 to eight at this point. You need a late flurry to tie the game at 23, as we talked about earlier. On a fourth down, I think you've got to put it in a place that's more catchable, meaning force your receiver or tight end, in this case, to either make the catch or have a very clear drop. Just like McKenzie, the ball was in his hands at the NFL level. You certainly can make that catch. I think the ball's got to be a foot and a half to two feet higher in a manner that the tight end can make the catch and get the first down. Put it somewhere where the receiver can make the play. If it's third down and you put the ball in this location, that's fine. You kick the field goal and you move on. But this is not. This is fourth down, 3.30 left in the fourth quarter. Should the tight end catch it if he wants to stay on the field for long periods of time? Yes. You guys have to let me know what you think. Having said all that, when you're dealing with Aaron Donald and you see him matched up against the left tackle and you're Anthony Richardson, <clears throat> and you know what the protection scheme is, I can understand getting rid of the ball quicker and have an accuracy issue. That doesn't seem to be the case here. He is in rhythm, in the middle of his throwing motion, before Donald is, is on top of him. He's in his field of view, obviously. This is the type of throw that will decide uh, the ceiling on the Colts' offense because all the other things are in place. I do suspect that Anthony Richardson can make it because he's so close to executing these things already. I do think these accuracy issues can be fixed. First of all, there's great scheme. There's great design on most of their plays. This offense is fun to watch. They've got a – it wasn't fun, like I said, for, to be a, being a Ravens fan watching it in week three because it, it felt like we couldn't stop anything. If you're a Colts fan, you have to let me know, first of all, if, if it's fun to watch for you. It probably wasn't as fun when Richardson was out. If, do you think that the accuracy and, and timing to a lesser extent – are, concern, are they something that concerns you? For me personally, I wouldn't say I'm concerned as much as I would say there are things that need to be improved on or fixed, if you want to use that word. For me, it appears to be a relative weakness for Richardson, meaning he's a guy who has so much ability, he can make so many throws, and he's so athletic and so willing to get rid of the ball quick and be a facilitator that these missed opportunities on these throws outside the numbers, I would say, appear to be a relative weakness. Sometimes it's just good coverage, though, and your options are limited. There's a third and eight against the Jags. And you get a hybrid Tampa 2 by the Jags. It's an inverted Tampa 2 down at the bottom of the screen and a typical Tampa 2 at the top. So this nickel defender is going to push out to the flats. And then this corner, Williams, is going to push to be the half field defender down to the bottom side. Hybrid Tampa 2. Flat defender here to the boundary, half defender. So you have a typical Tampa 2 up at the top and an inverted Tampa 2 down at the bottom. Additionally, a Lewican, who's lined up at the line of scrimmage, is going to drop out in coverage to the hash. One safety sits on the hash, and here is your Mike linebacker, Devin Lloyd, running between the hashes as the potential third deep defender. There's nowhere to go with the football, basically is what I'm saying. You have the tight ends who chip. That's a third and eight. Yeah, if you get the ball out to that tight end quick enough, some would say he's got an opportunity to get a first down. Cool. Watch it again and notice the nickel and the leverage supported safety who will be able to try to vice tackle him if the ball is thrown out into the flats. I'm talking about this defender here and this defender here. There's really no good option for Anthony Richardson at this point. Sometimes the defense has the right coverage call and they do a great job of it. The safety, I think, has sat directly in the path of where Richardson wants to go with the football, which is Pittman at the top of the numbers. And Re Richardson realizes there's nothing for him to do. He ends up getting sacked from behind. Even if you work through these reads insanely fast and you get the ball to the, to the tight end here, I'm talking about this tight end who's trying to chip and then release into the flats on third and eight. There's no guarantee he's going to get the first down. That's really the only option. So that leads to my point, the last five or six plays I showed you. That's why you have to make the throws that are available to you. 
And I thought the, the, the previous three or four I showed you were either off target slightly or a little bit slow, delayed, if you want to win 10, 11, 12 football games in the NFL, particularly in the division they're going to be in. <clears throat> Second and six against the Rams. This one's interesting. This is the final thought that you could possibly construe as um, negative. Second and six, pass is going to be incomplete to Pittman, who is the wing right here, as Downs motions through. Rams are in their base 3-4 against 11 personnel, so that's interesting in and of itself. Because, they, like I said, they normally play a 5-1. Richardson has the edge. Richardson can potentially scramble. <clears throat> Check out how the Rams handle it. After the motion through by Downs, the outside linebacker, 97, is going to handle the tight end in the flats. <clears throat> you have this fake block here, and then the tight end is going to slip out into the flats. Additional to that, the over concept from the other side is Pierce is going to be covered up by this safety here. They've taken away those two options, which is a trickle-down effect, if you will. That's part of the reason why Richardson could scramble here. But check out Pittman on this vertical. This ball should be thrown. And I think this is the design of the play, is to get the ball to him. Out in front, out in front of the corner who he has beat by a good two, two and a half yards. Richardson throws it late. At the point that he does decide to throw it, you're trying to get it to, to the back shoulder. Fine, that makes sense because of where the corner is. Now, look, if it sounds like I'm being overly negative, we have the film, we have the elevated view. But certainly if Richardson and his coaches were watching this right now, as I'm sure they did the next day, they would recognize that they've got to throw this football. Pittman had a clean win after the Jill insert. Everything is covered here. The tight end, the over concept, as a consequence, the corner is beat deep. And as much as the missed throws I describe as high are frustrating, this one would frustrate me more if I was a Colts fan or if I was a coach because I think the design of the play was to get a vertical or the over concept available. And you got a vertical that could have been a potential touchdown to Pittman, and we didn't even throw the football. I think that front side safety was the read. And since he didn't get depth, the opportunity was there, and we just didn't take it. You guys will have to let me know as a Colts fan, if you watch this long, if that's been covered, that play's been covered by other Colts content creators or media. It probably was during the season, so maybe I'm testing your memory there. I think that would be the most frustrating play that I've seen in the film study. What I have seen is a ton of strong throws in the time that he did play, that is. This is a third down conversion against the Texans. Actually gets called back because of an offensive penalty, but the throw. I often like to look at when the ball was released in relation to the receiver's cut. I talked about it on the first incompletion to uh, Pittman on a third down. He was releasing the football early. I complimented it. I think it was a, a good decision to get rid of the ball that early throw that just ended up being high. Check out when Richardson is preparing to throw the ball here. So he's examined the coverage correctly and understands where Downs is going to sit. I think him and Downs and Pittman – have a great relationship, and Richardson can rip it, meaning when he has a throw to make and he understands the coverage, he can make every throw. The high throws that I discussed, how do they fix that? I don't know. I don't know the technical you know, way for them to, pick, to, to be able to fix it. I do know that Colts fans should be excited. What I have seen on social media, I follow Colts Film Room on Twitter or X, and he does a fantastic job of breaking down plays, illustrating them on Twitter. And what I have seen is people being very excited. They should be. Um, I am, and I'm not even a Colts fan. Other than having family that live in Indiana, I'm not a Colts fan at all. But I'm only able to do occasional film study. When you see throws like this, no matter who it is, you have to be excited. When someone is even or, or not even even necessarily at this point, and a quarterback is still willing to throw the football, that means he understands the coverage. The offseason is my only time to look at some of these players, although I did do a Julius Brent's film study. And I did do a Josh Downs film study during the year because they're rookies. I like to do rookie film studies. Stay connected to those rookies from the standpoint of checking them out in the pre-draft process and then evaluating them at least once during the regular season if and when I can. The all season is my time to do that uh, for the guys that I didn't get to during the year. Overall, I was pretty impressed with Richardson and the ability that's there, the talent. The diverse amount of reads I think is maybe understated a little bit when I'm talking about the pass reads. 
against coverages that he has to make, and all the various option reads. I think I mentioned earlier the inverted veer, how many times you have to practice that to be efficient at it during the course of an NFL game and be able to make throws like this when the time comes. I think there's a very clear throwing ability for Richardson in terms of a ceiling from an arm talent standpoint that he has. It's already there. My two issues, quote, potentially, I've already mentioned, based on the limited sample size, would be the high throws when he's just putting too much mustard on the ball, maybe. And the others, there's others that I left out too, besides just those three or four. I can't show clearly every snap. But the ability to create with his own feet and with his own legs and then create for others like he does for the tight end here. The late throws that are not on quick game concepts don't concern me as much as the high throws because I think it's a technique thing there, a technical. I think the incredible gifts that Richardson has, his willingness to be a facilitator has to be mentioned and, and hopefully is being talked about by people that are Colts media, Colts content creators or fans. Some guys can average 25 a game in the NBA. I like basketball comparisons. Richardson looks like one of those guys. I'm not talking about as an actual basketball player. I mean, from his in, his talent standpoint in the NFL, he looks like a 22 to 25 points per game scorer in the NBA from a talent standpoint. Those guys aren't always willing to share the ball. He is. He looks like a guy who could score 25 and also give you eight assists a night because I see him throwing to more than just one or two receivers in the film that I've got. It's not just high targets for one or two guys. He's willing to execute the offensive scheme that's called, and he's willing to get the ball to whichever player ends up being open. I think that's a, a trait that that not all quarterbacks come into the league with, and he did. I don't do fantasy predictions, to be honest with you, because I'm not good at them, number one, and because I really don't like fantasy football, number two, the way that it has dehumanized people talking about players or the way that people have dehumanized players because of their a foundational connection to the game being fantasy football. But having said that, I think if Richardson's healthy, I expect a big season from him in 2024 in terms of completion percentage because of his willingness to get rid of the ball quickly on con on design concepts that I that I illustrated also the ability of the players around him and his coaches preparation level finding ways to get people open finding ways to put the defense in conflict I can personally vouch for that by w watching the Ravens defense which ended up being the number one defense in the league for many metrics in the NFL in 2023 struggle so mightily to deal with the Colts offense on a day when Gardner Minshew played and not Anthony Richardson. The ceiling of the Colts offense, if everyone's healthy, I think is sky high. You'll have to let me know the, first of all, if you like the plays that I picked to illustrate the co concepts or patterns that I was trying to describe, number one. Number two, you have to let me know if my evaluation lines up with other people's evaluation of your quarterback, Anthony Richardson. I think he's got tremendous talent. I hope for uh, complete health for him um, in the regular season. And somewhere along the line, if the Ravens and Colts get a rematch, I think it would be pretty exciting to see him and Lamar Jackson on the field against each other at the same time. I appreciate you guys' time, man. If you think other Colts fans would enjoy this film study look, this rather lengthy look at Anthony Richardson's 2023 season, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.